you know, people will ask, well, what can I do to change the way I live so that I can live more sustainably? And I tell them that perhaps the first thing we should think about is how we use water. And, you know, it, it goes not only into how you use water in your garden, but how you use water at home. Uh, one of the things my wife and I do is we have a little plastic bucket by every spigot at home, whether it's in the sink in the kitchen or the bathtub. And before we warm water, what we do is we collect cold water in the bucket and we use it to water the garden. <clears throat> it's amazing how much less water you use in the mm -hmm. garden when you're using that excess water that otherwise just goes down the drain. If we think about the way we landscape our gardens, maybe we should think of using more and more uh, drought tolerant plants. And when I say drought tolerant plants, it's not just native plants, but we can think also in our climate, since we live in a Mediterranean climate here, maybe one of the things we can think about is plants from other Mediterranean climate zones. For example, from the Mediterranean region, from parts of Australia, from parts of Chile, and areas like that. Because these are all plants that are have adapted to that low seasonal rainfall that we have here in California. So, you know, if somebody is thinking, I have a 2,000 square foot roof and I want to put plants on it, first talk to an architect, okay? Uh, they, they automatically have to engage an architect. And then all the architects now are pretty much attuned to green roofs. Before you, you think, oh, is that too expensive? Look at the life of a standard roof. Now, you look at a standard shingle roof on any structure here in the city. Uh, after about 15 years, you have to start monitoring it because you have to start thinking, oh, oh it may leak. After about 20 or 21 years, you have to think of replacing it. This kind of roof, will last at a minimum about 45 years, oh, wow. which is significant, really, when you think of it. I mean, so that cost of $17 a square foot, if you can get a lifespan of 45 years out of the roof, that's really pretty good. We have on the roof soil that's been tested in many different sites. And what, we, what you want is, a, is a, a substrate that will breathe. You want one that will retain a certain amount of moisture. You want one that will retain a certain amount of nutrients. You want one that will also provide a certain amount of anchorage for the roots. And in fact, if you look at this substrate, you can see a lot of this, okay? That's uh, very porous. Yes, this is porous volcanic rock, a red volcanic rock. And 45% of the substrate on this roof consists of this. This brown would be, the, the entire roof is a sort of a lightweight concrete roof. So you have the lightweight concrete over a steel frame, this black layer, is what we call the waterproof layer. It's like a heavyweight standard roofing oh, shingle. Cool. That, that's this point here. These layers are a little smaller than the actual that's on the roof because the actual on the roof would be about that deep. But we just did, this is not to scale. So this is the insulation layer. And then you'll notice this one here. You notice, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift this up and I want you to look in there. What does it look, look it like to like you? It looks like an egg crate. It looks like an egg crate, exactly. And that is the drainage layer, okay? So everything above that is made so that you can get drainage to that layer. So it means that you'll get residual moisture that hasn't been actually absorbed by the soil or the plants that will actually drain into that. And then eventually it will eventually evaporate. And then above that, we have three inches of substrate here, this one here. And then we have what are called these bio trays. That's what this thing is. And these bio trays have three inches of substrate as well. And they're 17 inches by 17 inches. And Those are the they're made of husk. coconut husk fiber. A rooftop garden like this, or landscape I should say, is just like a garden. It requires maintenance. You can't have any kind of a garden and say, I'm going to plant natives and I won't have to worry. Because mm -hmm. even if you plant natives, you do have to weed. Because what happens is you have birds and wildlife that come to your garden. They bring seeds of things that may not be native or may not be things that you want. And after the winter rains, things are going to come up.